In today's video, we will be having a deeper discussion about why black people don't support their own businesses. I concluded that there are four main reasons that blacks don't support their own businesses. And they were the segregation, equal opportunity employment, welfare, and ultimately the black woman. In this video, we're gonna come up with some major conclusions solely based on facts. And we're gonna give credit where credit's due. And we're also gonna be able to see crystal clear where accountability lies. But we can't do anything without a few facts first. And the first fact is that in 1963, 90% of American households were headed by a male. And that includes the black household. And the second amazing thing we have to understand is Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty, which funded Head Start Preschool, Job Corps, Food Stamps, Welfare, and ultimately Social Security. Did you know that if a kid attends Head Start Preschool, he's 30% less likely to go to prison? Job Corps is great because it teaches trades in a disciplined environment. Food Stamps is great because simply we need to eat. Welfare, we know what happened, it ushered in a great environment for women to be independent, and it also helped them raise their children in the absence of a man. Social Security gives us monetary benefits when we reach the age of retirement or we can't work anymore. It also incentivizes paying into the system. People want to pay that Social Security, don't they? Now, back then, I would say that the life expectancy after retirement was maybe two to three years because now it's only six. But you may pay that Social Security for 40 plus years. You did. Let's talk about how the segregation affected black business. Now, the segregation is very touching because a lot of lives were lost so that we could finally gain access to what mainstream America had. And compared to what we had, it was worlds apart. Our businesses were shacks compared to theirs. But we did have businesses. And in a lot of cities in this country, we had business districts. Once the laws made us and our money welcomed into mainstream America, our businesses all but vanished. After being denied for so many years, you finally have access to what you know is the best. Because of racism, most black businesses never had access to the best. Let's talk about how equal opportunity employment affected black business. Equal opportunity employment ushered in pride, dignity, prestige, and money to black men and black women. And a lot of those jobs were government jobs. Look, if you go tell your grandparents right now that you're going to quit a good government job, that's right up there we're talking about Jesus. With the segregation, we can go wherever we want to spend our money. And the last place we wanted to spend it. Now, I have to add this because our government is genius. They're really smart. Check this out. Women from all aspects of our society were entering the labor market. And a lot of these women were still married. Our government's largest source of income is from collecting taxes. Now, with equal opportunity employment, our government has two sources of tax revenue in one household. Equal opportunity employment basically made the black business the last option in the black community. Now let's talk about welfare. And we're gonna put some things together with the discussion of welfare. To all the fellows out there, fellas, welfare is kind of like having a side piece, right? So you get your side piece, she's normally younger, you say, hey look baby, I'm gonna pay for this place you're gonna stay in. But one main rule is, you can't have 
any of these young cats running around here getting my good stuff. You know what I mean? Welfare was cataclysmic to the black family. It solidified the black woman as head of household. And one of the stipulations of this non-contributory program was you could not have a working age male around you and those kids. The black male was vilified and ostracized and labeled a deadbeat dad. While the manless black woman was glorified and through welfare monetized. And this makes me kind of suspicious of welfare and equal opportunity employment. And let me tell you why. Back to the side piece principle. If you're going to give this woman money to raise her kids, you want a return on your investment. And from a governmental point of view, how can you get return on your investment of this young lady? You simply put her to work through your Equal Opportunity Employment Program. Yes, she will be picked before me because she has a debt that she owes. She was pipelined into a lot of Equal Opportunity jobs. The segregation. Every black man knows that she could always go more places than us. Equal opportunity employment. We also know that she was pipelined in to get the jobs before a lot of us. And we all know the destruction of welfare to us. Welfare has to be the source of the I don't need a man mantra, attitude, or slogan. She quickly surpassed us in higher learning. Black men saw the government as family destroyers, while the black woman saw the government as a savior. Black men are at the bottom of every employment category that counts. Because we have owned the majority of the black businesses, our public persona, our perceived business acumen is very negative. The black woman has the money, the power, and the influence in the black community. And the words say, too much is given, much is expected. She has to lead the way with the commitment to black businesses in our community. A black male is six to seven times more likely to patronize a black business than a black woman. I used to think this negative sentiment was solely against the black man until I talked to some of my business-owning black female counterparts. And they have horror stories, too. We know that the dollar circulates about 30 days in the Asian community, but about four to six hours in the black community. Now, the government's in the business of collecting taxes. Only 3% of black businesses actually have employees. That means the government cannot collect taxes from this business. Now, if you own a small business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once you get employees, you know, there's your checks and balances. By the end of this decade, the black woman will own the majority of the small black businesses in the black community. And the government is already written, will subsidize these businesses. Hey guys, as a community, we need to get to work because the government already has a viable solution.